I'm Angela Harris. I'm managing the pavilion this year, so I'll be running the speakers. And so if you have any questions, if you are a speaker and you have questions, or you're an audience member and you have questions, please find me and I'd be happy to answer that for you as best I can. If not, I will find somebody who can. Um, it's my pleasure today to introduce the president of the Free State Project, Queen Quill herself. <laughs> She's probably giving me googly eyes behind my head for saying that, but she's here to welcome you all. So with no more ado, here's Carla Garrett. See, I like to take the mic off because then you can turn your head. Hi everyone, I'm Carla. Welcome to Porkfest uh, 2015. I am so happy to see everyone, and apparently people are still settling in, uh, but this room will fill up over the course of this week. Um, who's here for the first time? I see some, ha-ha, yay, woo! <laughs> Oh, that's great because that's really what we're trying to do. You know, we love the old timers. We love seeing our old friends. Um, I see people in the room who've been here longer than I have and who've been running programs since the start. I thought maybe as part of the welcoming, and we'll do a bit of a Q&A if you guys have questions, just want to get situated, all of that. But I was going to talk a little bit about my own personal history with the Free State Project and with Porkfest. So for those of you who don't know, my husband and I moved out with our dog, Nelly, <laughs> and Emmett is being the stagehand there for a second. Um, in 2008, we moved out in a blizzard in February. Not what I would recommend people do, but the beauty of what we do with the Free State Project is we have a pay it forward program. So pretty much everyone who moves can expect some people to show up to help you when you move. So, you know, it was mid-February, we'd had, I think it was four feet of snow, <laughs> it was a lot of snow, and 15 people showed up at our house in Hudson and had unpacked the vehicle within an hour. In fact, I was still driving around trying to find the pizza store because the unofficial rule is uh, you pay it for it so people come and help you and you bribe them with pizza and beer. So I was still looking for the pizza and the beer by the time the truck had been emptied. So that's really something you can look forward to when you move out. Um, Somehow, I don't know, someone got an inkling that I might be a good person to throw a party. They weren't wrong, but, uh, you know, I got tapped. They were looking for a volunteer to help with Porkfest. So in 2009, I took the inenviable job <laughs> of organizing Porkfest. Back then, it was maybe 600 people. The only events were down in just this room. That had expanded from my first pork fest that I attended, which was in 2006. Back then, pork fest was only up at the old building. It's now where the children's programming is being held. Um, it's called the Bingo Hall. It burnt down last year, so it's now a different sort of shape and space to what it used to be. But in 2006, it was maybe a hundred of us. It was mostly mountain men with big beards. So it was about a hundred people, mountain men, long beards, open carrying. I had come from New York City. I was like, what the hell is this? What's going on? And obviously my own journey has evolved from then as well. We came out, I went to Appleseed, I bought my first gun, I learned all of those things. And that was a really fun and interesting journey as well. So back in 2009 and 2010 uh, was really when things, I would say, started to pop for Porkfest as an event. So we've grown. We have a wonderful, wonderful lineup now. We have really tried to put some emphasis on programming for families and children. Um, I'm sure many of you know that Laura Skenazy will be here tonight. She's the founder of the Free Range Children's Movement. For those of you who follow the news, have little kids, you know that there's sort of this tendency now to criminalize parenting. So, you know, I think there was a case recently in Pennsylvania where uh, 
a 10 year old and a seven year old brother and sister were walking home from the park and the kids got picked up, the parents were arrested for negligence for letting their children walk home from the park. Now I grew up in South Africa, we were allowed to roam, it didn't have a fancy name, there was a cowbell and the cowbell was rung if the food was ready before it was dark, otherwise if it was dark you needed to come home, right? And that's sort of part I think of the society and the way we want to live, we don't have to be coddled, we're individuals, we're uh, responsible people, and I'll talk a little bit about responsibility here at Porkfest as well. Um, so Leonore will be speaking tonight, and I really hope that people will come talk to her. One of the things you'll also see throughout the week is that there are children who have free range little magnets on. The thinking behind that was that yeah, it's great, you know, if your kid's free range, but, you know, I want to know the kid's allowed to be roaming um, and that it's not, you know, he or she's not just lost or in trouble or, like, where's mom and dad? So, um, obviously, anyone who sees a child, you know, who looks like they might be lost, definitely feel free to intervene. We have our pork rangers this year. They wear the bright yellow T-shirts. Um, you can see them from a mile <laughs> off. They are an all-volunteer organization that has evolved out of the Church of the Sword, which is one of three churches we now have in the Free Stater community. There's Church of the Sword. They meet every Sunday in uh, Manchester, now moving to Concord. There's one out in uh, Keene. And then there's also the Free Church up in Grafton. So, you know, each of those kind of have uh, their own flavors, I think. Um, they're actually currently all involved in lawsuits with the state of New Hampshire who are not willing to recognize them as churches. So I think that'll be a sort of interesting evolution to watch, you know, what happens there because really what gives the state the right to say what a religion is if, if you know, if one of the beliefs of this country is freedom of religion, I don't think anyone should get to define it. And, you know, if Scientology can be a church, then I reckon the things we're doing can be churches, too. <laughs> um, so that's the Pork Rangers. Um, they're set up at the end of the campground at the top there. They will be around. They also will be looking really just to help and assist. For the most part, we always have peaceful pork fests. I think it comes with the territory in the sense that we believe in personal responsibility. There are people who will be open carrying. We do ask if you're new to open carrying that you take one of the gun etiquette classes um, that are in the schedule. Uh, Tony Lekas runs that. And that'll just really tell you, you know, be safe. You know, if you're gonna get shit faced, go hand in your gun somewhere. There are places where we can lock them up. Just be a responsible firearm owner. If you are wearing a, a, a rifle or a long, whatever it's called, rifle, um, we're gonna ask that you uh, get a, a chamber. Um, and part of that is just, it's really hard in New Hampshire with long gun to safely point it anywhere. You might bend down to tie your shoelace. You know, who knows? Uh, the ground in New Hampshire, it is called the Granite State. So I had an incident a few years ago where I was talking to someone and he was, you know, he was showing someone his firearm and he said, you know, well down south, you know, we could just fire into the ground. And I was like, don't do that here. <laughs> it's, it's rock, you know, so, so we want everyone to stay safe. Um, in terms of programming, uh, I believe there's one page possibly missing from the program. I haven't checked it myself, but I think it's this afternoon scheduling. So maybe treat it as a bit of a scavenger hunt and go from place to place and sort of see what catches your fancy in terms of um, programming. There, we have the Atlas Society tent. They're one of our main sponsors and you know we appreciate their support. The Atlas Society um, actually moved their headquarters from Washington DC where they used to be to New Hampshire and have been hosting their annual events in New Hampshire as well. That's really something I would love to see start even more, right? If we can create New Hampshire 
um, and build it into this true liberty capital of the world where people can come and they can see that these ideas translate to more peace and more prosperity. So, you know, I would love to see in the long term some of the big think tanks at a minimum open some you know, satellite offices here. I'd love to get all the, you know, DC libertarian think tanks to realize Mordor is never going to change and, you know, get their butts over here and help us to build this from the ground up. Um, that's an ambitious plan. It's probably going to take some years, but if we can start to encourage organizations like that to move out here. So it was very exciting when the Atlas Society did that. So they're sponsoring a tent over there. They'll have sort of philosophical objectivist type of talks in the mornings. And in the afternoons, it flips into the Alt Expo programming. And that's sort of, I wouldn't say just specifically left libertarian, but you know they have some really um, awesome, interesting topics. I always see some stuff there where I'm like, oh, I want to go listen to that talk. Um, and then the other tent, which we can't see right now, is the Creating Communities tent. And that um, is super exciting. I think the name says it all. We're creating communities, and it's plural as well, right? Because one of the exciting things that happens I, for certainly for me personally, and I've talked to many people who've had the same experience, you know, first of all, for a lot of people, you come in, you, you found Ron Paul, and that's your way in, right? And then you're like, wow, Liberty people, they exist here and there, and I can kind of, you know, I have three friends now because, you know, <laughs> we kind of think the same and whatever, and, and maybe the only thing you have in common is your belief in liberty. When you move to New Hampshire, you then get that sort of next level of, hey, maybe I like artsy stuff and hiking and um, cooking and I'm not that into guns. My husband would shoot me if he heard me that. You know, so you can find your niche. You can actually find your people. So you, can, you get in with the liberty stuff, but then from there you can really go, okay, I'm a prepper and I wanna hang out with those people. And you can really find your tribe within our greater tribe. So that's really also a great selling point, I would say, of the Free State Project and what we're trying to do here. So the goal, of course, of Porkfest is really to showcase New Hampshire and its rainy season, apparently. <laughs> um, you know, it's camping. Uh, I know it can get wet. I know it can get a little unpleasant. But that's really also part of the fun and part of the bonding, says the woman in the hotel. Uh, <laughs> um, but really, it is part of it. And I was talking to some uh, first-time campers earlier and that they're a little wet and you know they were like oh, I don't know it just like started raining at two o'clock this morning and they seemed a little grumpy you know it's it's pork fest you know we often talk about uh, the zombie apocalypse you know what would happen if certain you know if we have a dollar collapse if there really are some of the more not happy things that could happen in the long term so at a minimum, if you're ever feeling cranky and something bit you and your butt's wet and you didn't have a good night's sleep, treat Porkfest like a survivalist game. <laughs> Just, you know, kind of look at it like, hey, if this was a zombie apocalypse, would I really be complaining about these things right now? And then, of course, if it is super wet, please come into places like the pavilion or the bingo hall or the arcade up there where there is, um, you know, some real shelter. In terms of the group photo, I just wanted to make sure, that's something we really ask everyone if you can, come down for that, it's really fun. In the past, and maybe you've seen the photos online, we used to do it on the hill, and it was a beautiful indication of how we were growing, you know, year by year, one year, you know, it was a little group and then it got bigger and bigger. Because of the way the tents are now um, situated, we're actually gonna be shooting it in the field from above. We'll um, hopefully have some of our aerial robots here and hopefully all of them will be ours. <laughs> um, so, you know, be sure to be down on the field Saturday at three o'clock so we can get, you know, it packed in there and really get a great photo. Um, 
Kristen and Matt are over there to answer any particular questions, but um, I think we'll also be setting up a mic at some stage for Q&A, or we can just shout it out. But, you know, we want the ambassadors to be here. If you haven't signed up for the Free State Project, use this week to sort of think about it. Ultimately, it's a pledge. Um, I often have mainstream media ask me, well, if someone signs up and they don't, uh, they don't move, what do you guys do? And, you know, I like to say a little tongue in cheek. I'm like, well, you know, what we do is we, uh, we have a SWAT team and we go and we black bag them and we take them to Syria and then we torture them until they decide to move to New Hampshire. Of course, we don't do that because we don't believe in force. You know, we believe in the non-aggression principle. We believe in, um, you know, personal responsibility. So Porkfest is a party. It is uh, a lot of fun. We ask people to just kind of keep a little bit of balance in your fun. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a firearm, uh, please, you know, drink and drug responsibly. Drink, drug, and carry responsibly. I might make that a <laughs> slogan. Um, and just, you know, have a good time. Pick up after yourself. Please put your trash in the trash cans. I was walking down this morning and did a little lit litter pickup, which should not be happening on Monday. Um, so if you see other people not doing it, just a friendly, kind reminder. You know, it's not, it's, it's really about a partnership. We're all here to have a good time. So, you know, put your trash away, put your bottles away. If you're a smoker, please put your butts in the butt cans or, you know, ash it out and keep it and throw it out at your campsite. Uh, that's really one of the things that over the years we've had issues with that and uh, the one year uh, Buzz could not do the big gay dance party which will be on Friday evening this year in in the tents out there um, we had another group come in freedom flaming freedom and they had these beautiful red balloons but then we didn't know what to do with the balloons and somewhere along the line people thought it would be cool if we popped the balloons I spent the entire Monday at the end of Porkfest, walking that field, picking up little pieces of red balloons. <laughs> so we want to avoid those kinds of situations because uh, I'd rather not pick up someone else's trash. <laughs> um, so there are cans around. Um, we might look about situating some more. Uh, for those of you who've been here before and know that sometimes we have uh, issues with too many people for the showers, we really try to address that this year. So we have a shower truck coming in from Thursday. And if you're a VIP, it's, uh, it's free to shower. If you're not, it's a $2 shower and it's, you need to pick up a token at Pork Info, which is at the top of the hill. Uh, we have Agora Valley. If you haven't had the joy of walking through there yet, people will be setting up uh, probably today and tomorrow, but we already have some great food vendors. I just had a very tasty hot dog last night. Um, there'll be Bitcoin stuff. I see you've got your Bitcoin t-shirt on. I, uh, that t-shirt always gets me because I don't follow sport at all, but I guess the Bruins is some sports team and their logo looks very similar. And I was in a grocery store once and a guy had this shirt on and I like walked up to him and I was like, Bitcoin! And, I was, and he's like, what? <laughs> he's like, no, Bruins. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, go explore Agora Alley. Uh, Valley. We have the children's zones are up that way. You know, there is some adult stuff that happens down here, particularly something like Buzz's Big Gay Dance Party, which is a lot of fun. I, you know, even if that's not really your scene, I recommend coming and just enjoying it for sort of the, the show that it is. And Buzz's have been doing it for many years and, um, and is just really to be applauded for putting together this amazing event. Um, and she also, you know, was, that was sort of indicative of uh, her seeing that there was something that she wanted as a gay person um, that wasn't being offered. And she said, well, instead of complaining about it or being like, why haven't you done this? She was like, I'm 
going to do it, which is part of our philosophy as well. So if you spend the week here and you're like, why don't we have this? Or, you know, we have, uh, we have a Muslim camp that's been coming out for several years now. They do Ramadan during the week, so they fast. And then they give away free food at sunset. They fed me several times last year and really kept me running because, you know, you're busy and you forget to eat. And they would just find me and hand me a bowl of food. And I'd be like, thank you so much. Uh, we have a Christian group up near the playground. Uh, we have, uh, you know... Jews for pork fest. Um, so there really is. And those were kind of gaps that people saw and they were like, look, this is something I'm passionate about and I'm going to do something about it. Um, so if you see something and you want something, come talk to us or write a proposal, let us know. Uh, I think... So let's talk a little bit about the pork buddies. So in the vein of if you see something or you think there's a way that you can complement the community, because we're getting big, you know, we have almost 17,000 signers, more than 10% of people have already moved. Um, people are coming in on a weekly basis now. In fact, I think there are like three families who are trying to move in during Porkfest, and I was like, that's a bit of a scheduling issue because most of us are up here. So that's, you know, it's harder to get people to show up. So move the week before or the week after pork fest would be my recommendation. But um, Gloria had this idea where she said, well, one of the things she thought would be really useful is if we created a mentoring program. So where we start to partner people who recently moved with people who... Um, who, you know, moved a while ago. And it would be a regional thing so that, you know, if you move to the town of Weir, say, you know, there's someone there who can tell you who's the auto shop guy who might, you know, help you with your inspection. Who's, you know, who's a good doctor, who's a good nurse, who, uh, you know, schools, whatever those questions are based on kind of where you're going to land. So, Gloria, stand up so everyone can see you. She also does beekeeping, so you should go to that class too. So she just took the bull by the horn, said, we're going to do this. So we're looking both for the people to be the mentors within the state, and then obviously once you're planning your move, um, there's a great moving guide on the website, freestateproject.org. I'm going to get points for that. <laughs> um, where you can go and it'll actually break it down one year out from your move, you know, six months out from your move, you should be thinking about this, three months out, the last month, you know, the last week, panic. Um, <laughs> but um, I think this Pork Buddies program is going to really help as we trigger the move, right? Because one of the great things is that the project has taken over a decade because just based on looking at something to circle back, you know, to 2009 when I was doing Porkfest, there was maybe a team of five to 10 of us. Now there is easily a core team of over 20 people with discrete areas that they're dealing with. And then under that, we probably have 100 volunteers working on site during the week. We couldn't do that, but as we get bigger, we can do that. And as we get bigger, we can introduce programs like the Pork but pork buddies program because there are enough people. So when we trigger the move, I'm really glad that it's been sort of staggered a little bit because, you know, if everyone decided to move tomorrow, we're going to be overwhelmed. How are we going to get, you know, enough people to show up at every move to make it feel like you are being welcomed and that you are coming in and um, that, you know, we can deliver on our promises. So, um, so thank you, Gloria, for putting that together. If you're interested, the, uh, the email address is porkbuddy, singular, at freestateproject.org. You can go there either to sign up as a mentor within a region, or if you're close to planning your move, let us know, and we'll try and put you in touch with someone who can work with you. All right, any questions? No? Oh, come on. Yes. So we are just shy of 17,000. Um, currently, projections look like we'll trigger the move in mid-2017. Depending on our fundraising, that can be accelerated. I mean, ultimately, really, Free State 
Project Inc., like the proper, is just a marketing vehicle, right? It's an organization that's basically trying to sell New Hampshire and the principles of liberty and convincing liberty activists to move here and live in a state where we can build our own institutions and our own way of living to really say these ideas work. And it's everything from the churches to the think tanks to the businesses to banks to co-ops to mutual aid, you know, all of those things. And actually, I did neglect to mention, we do have a mutual aid. Um, well, see, the rain is good for my uh, audience attendance. I bet you this room's going to get fuller. <laughs> Um, they're up right next to Pork Rangers, which are the security people. They're called Free Aid. They've actually been doing uh, their mutual aid uh, with us since 2010. Before that, it was just willy-nilly. But it's nice to know we have a nurse. You know, we have a doctor on site. There is a hospital close by. Um, and they, they have everything from, you know, bug spray to condoms. So... Um, <laughs> Depending on your proclivities, uh, you know, you could stop there um, for some support. And then, um, unless people have questions, I'm just pretty much going to say, welcome to Porkfest. Have a great time. Come say hi to me. I have a question. So, of the 17,000... 1,755 as of yesterday have moved, so just over 10%. And of course, the way the pledge works is you don't, no one's actually obligated to move. So a bunch of us were just, we're not going to wait. So we did a first movers program back in 2008. That's actually how I signed up. Um, I signed up for the Free State Project in 2003, but in 2008, Free Talk Live, working with the then board, put together a program to say, hey, if we can get 1,000 people to pledge to move in the next year, you know, this will give it some momentum, this will keep it rolling. So we did, um, we did that, and of that group, about 30% moved. So... You know, it's, the strike rate isn't, you know, the media will ask me all the time, well, of the 20,000, how many do you think are going to move? And Jason Sorens will be doing a talk later in, during Porkfest, the founder of, of the Free State Project. You know, and he's done different models, you know, and he thinks somewhere between 30 and 40 percent, even... With the 1,700 movers, if you look at the successes we've actually had with such a small number of people, I mean, New Hampshire is the only state where there are no license plate scanners. There are no li knife laws here. There are, um, you know, we stopped RFID in the state. Um, I mean, and this was, you know, back when we had maybe 500 activists. So as we grow, you know, we can build those institutions, but we can also push back against the state. We have um, almost, we, depending on whose numbers you work with, let's just say we have a couple of dozen free staters in the state house. Um, I think we are getting to a stage where those people who are interested in politics, and of course this is what participants do once they get here, um, personally, like the FSP is not a political organization, but there are people who are free staters who are political, you know, who come. And we're getting to the stage now where, you know, you could look at a free stater running for governor. You know, people can start running for Senate because, you know, there are residency requirements, so people have to be here for at least seven years if you're going to run as for governor. But we've also had the fortunate situation of choosing the right state. Like, New Hampshire was the right state, not only for those 101 reasons that you can read on the website and, if, and uh, Bo and the crew that made the 101 reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire movie, which we'll be showing during Porkfest. I would highly recommend, if you haven't seen that, go watch it. It'll be in one of the tents later in the week. Um, but there's a... There is a live and let live mentality here that is 
palpable. It's actually real. You know, you can talk to an average neighbor and they really are like, yeah, we think all government people are crooks and, you know, no one's happy on tax day. And there really is that mentality here. And I think with the Free State Project coming into New Hampshire, we've actually reawakened the sleeping liberty tiger in the hearts of the people who live here, where they're really starting to say, you know what, we've got to start to make and take a stand. You know, I, I'm not someone who's fond of being like, I told you so, but I think we're at a stage in this country where we can actually see that where we are in a position where we can legitimately start to say to people, we told you so. A good example of that is something like police militarization, right? For years, many of us have been talking about there is a growing, increasing police state. For me personally, I see it because I grew up in a police state and I know what it looks like. And I know that if I'm scared to fly or if I'm scared of a cops behind me or if I get pulled over for something, I mean, the idea that you could live in a country where you could get pulled over for something and get shot and killed by a police officer is absurd, right? That's not a place that any of us want to live in. And because we now have the, um, the confluence of technology for the first time with smartphones, with cameras, where people can film the police, um, you know, that was my activism when I moved here. I filmed police officers and I fought it all the way to the appeals court and at least five states and millions of people are now more free because they don't have to go fight that fight. I mean, the police here know they do not hassle us with that anymore at all. You will see it even in the videos where you see altercations between police officers, they don't try it and take the phones anymore, or exceptionally less than it used to be. So we were right about police militarization, police misconduct, and that's an in, because suddenly, you know, people like the mainstream media start to pay attention to those stories, and they're like, well, these guys are kind of right about this. Then it becomes, okay, what else can we say we're right about? So we know inflation and dollar, the destruction of the dollar, that's something we're right about. You know, whether you're a hard currency person, um, and Bernard von Nothaus will be speaking later this week. He just got, um, you know, his leg bracelet taken off. This is a guy who printed silver rounds and you know, got arrested because he was trying to compete with the feds. I mean, once you break down how they go after every single area where you try and reclaim a little bit of your liberty, whether it's through hard money, whether it's through Bitcoin, you know, Lynn Ulbricht is here, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison for building a website. Um, I mean, that breaks my heart. They, oh, so it's Bernard, Lynn, we have um, Philip Stinson. He's a professor. He teaches out at Bowling Green. He'll be out here on Saturday afternoon. I actually found him because I was reading an article about police um, militarization and misconduct, and his name came up as this professor who runs the largest database of police misconduct in America. And it turns out he used to be a cop in New Hampshire. And I had just done a panel discussion at UNH, at University of New Hampshire in Dover, with uh, the police chief of Dover, the head of the Department of Se uh, Homeland Security for New Hampshire, and a wonderful local state rep, J.R. Howell, who's very pro Second Amendment. And it was the four of us, and you know, the kids really wanted to learn more about, is there an issue, what's going on? Now, I had thought they were pre-law students, Turns out they were um, all, you know, pre-cop or pre-justice. So I'm not sure if I, you know, totally changed their minds. But, you know, I, they did end up with, you know, having to Google things like qualified immunity, um, you know, where basically, you know, government officials get a get-out-of-jail-free card for everything they do, but then they come after us or after our allies or after our friends and put them in jail for a lifetime. But, you know, police officers can shoot someone and nothing happens. 
And once again, I think that that is a real opportunity because that is one of those issues where they can't lie anymore. There's evidence, right? Um, and that is going to make a real difference. So the more we can find ways to combine technology with our quest for freedom and document things, the more we can hold people accountable through transparency, the more we can actually change the world in our favor. So there will be wonderful, wonderful speakers here throughout the week. You know, bring your questions. Be sure to like mingle. Make sure you learn everyone's name. By the end of this week, I want to personally know everyone, so come find me. I'm often right over there <laughs> um, because of my dog. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, just have fun, communicate, be responsible, throw your trash out. But most of all, really consider coming here and doing this with us because we are making history, and I want you to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you.